Hey guys, it's me. Um, I was originally going to do this video as a reflection on 2014 oh. into a, um, you know, kind of a projection into 2015, and I can do that a little bit. Um, you know, 2014, I had my audition with 12 Stone, and it didn't go so well the first time. It was really, really sad um, to, to not get accepted back in June. Um, but hey, it's life. It happens. Um, I remember being pretty heartbroken about it. Um, but it led to some really great things. Um, I got a vocal coach and, uh, we've been working on a lot of stuff. And when I auditioned in December, um, even Jonathan said he could, he could tell a difference. Like he could see that I had been growing and I had been learning and that's kind of where I wanted to take this video. Um, when I really, really thought about it, I was like, it, it, I want it to be less about me and more about, about you watching the video. Um, I realized that sometimes it's really hard to have the motivation to go forward. And sometimes it's really hard to, um, to see the light at the end of the tunnel and, and I'm hoping that this video can provide a little bit of um, some motivation, maybe some excitement for things to come, even though you don't know what's actually out there. Um, and I'll just give a little free story real quick again, back to my audition in June when Jonathan told me that I didn't make the cut. I, I'm, I'm not going to lie, I was extremely, extremely heartbroken. Um, I'm pretty darn sure I cried on the way home just from, you know, like getting my hopes up. I was so excited. Like, you know, everyone said, hey, you should be on stage. You should be singing with them. You're really, really good. Why aren't you up there? And I thought, you got a point. Why am I not up there? So I auditioned, but this will be a breeze. And I'll admit, I barely barely prepared I had those two songs that he asked me uh, to be ready for for I think two or three weeks because we had to postpone it because I gotten sick I had them for a really long time I should have been prepared and I wasn't because I thought I got this no big deal and when he said that I was really good but not a team material that was the first time someone had ever told me I wasn't as good as I thought I was. And it hurts. It really does hurt when someone tells you, you think you're awesome, but you're not. You know, you're good, but I've seen better. I know better. You've got to step up your game. And I could have let that get to me, and I did. And, I, and I'm not going to lie, I did let it get to me the very first uh, day or two and finally I sent Jonathan a letter and I said you know thank you uh, for taking the time to audition with me and you're right I need to grow I need to improve who do you suggest I get vocal lessons through I, I need I need vocal lessons I've never had them in my entire life I'm I was two, 29 at the time and I had never had vocal lessons in my entire life. And um, I'm still 29, by the way. <laughs> um, but I was 29, you know, just turned 29. I'm like, I've never had vocal lessons in my life. And he's got a point. I'm good, but I'm not that good. So he suggested two people, and I messaged them both. And I said, whoever gets back to me first is the one I'll go with. Because that's the person who wants somebody else. And so um, I heard back from Jessica and we started this, this training and I thought it was silly at first, like really, we're just breathing exercises. And then I realized I didn't even hardly have the stamina to, to sing. And then my vocal range was weak. And then I realized when we were done with our vocal lessons, even if all we did for an entire hour was just vocal exercises, vocal warm ups for an entire hour, I felt like my singing ability had greatly increased like I felt more confident in it my tone sounded better I could breathe better I wasn't you know <gasps> you know not being able to breathe after holding a really long note so I thought wow okay maybe there's something to this you know and I had to think about it after a while it was just 
I had gone 29 years of my life never having a single vocal lesson ever. I mean, aside from school in choir class, you know, but that that's not like personalized vocal lessons where they say they look at you and go, this is your voice. This is what you need to do. I never had that. All I had was choir class. Hey, you need to hit these notes. They need to hit those notes and everybody, whatever. And I was only in choir until I was able to choose band and then I went to band. So, um, but yeah, so I had gone 29 years with this this talent that I feel that I was given and I had approved upon by myself by listening to artists on the radio um, you know by just listening by ear and and Jonathan saying you're good but not quite a material yet I realized that was actually kind of a compliment in a way it was like hey you're really good for never having a vocal lesson let's see where we can level you up to once you have some, where, where your potential is. And so when I came back in December for the audition, he said there was a considerable difference. He could tell, A, first off, I was extremely, extremely, extremely prepared. I listened to those songs until I knew them backwards and forwards. You could start me on any verse and I would know those songs that he gave me. Um, I refused to walk in unprepared. And I walked in and I had just gotten this purple hair done. So I'm like, okay, I'm me. I'm confident. This is who I am. And you know what? If it's not good enough, I'll try harder. I'll keep pushing until Jonathan or whoever looks me in the eye and says, Michelle, please stop auditioning. You're not going to make it. I would stop. And then I would try harder and come back again until they yelled at me again. Um, I'm a little bit stubborn like that. <laughs> but, you know, even Jonathan said in December that he could tell a difference. He knew that the vocal lessons were working. Six months difference, and, and he could see it. Um, I still don't know the answer. Um, I know they've been really busy between the holidays and, you know, opening up five new campuses so I'm kind of giving them some slack a little bit but I will be sending another email uh, to try to get an answer at least if it means I need to keep uh, training which I will do or if there's something else I need to focus on um, I will say that my vocal lessons have been a blessing um, it really has kind of opened me up more than I ever thought I would be I, uh, <laughs> and I do vlogs like this for the same reason. I'm not a very, I don't want to say I'm not an outgoing person. I'm kind of shy at first. Like I don't go out of my way to meet people. Uh, when someone says, Hey, can you sing us a song? I'm like, uh, I don't really, I haven't really warmed up and, uh, can't really think of a song off the top of my head right now. And you know, I'll come up with any excuse I can to not have to sing on the spot. And as a singer, I should just be like, sure, what do you want to hear? And I should just be able to, you know, pull songs out of a hat and just start singing them. But I was a little afraid to do that. And, and it's a little overwhelming at first when somebody asks you on the spot, like, hey, we're in the middle of, you know, the grocery store. Do you mind singing me a song? Be like, uh, <laughs> not here. <laughs> but, you know, I feel like, Things have gotten better, and I've gotten more confident, and I refuse to give up. I do. Uh, when you realize that something's your passion, I don't understand, but you don't give up. You just don't. If it's something you want to do, if it's something you love, don't just give it up because it's hard. Guess what? Life is hard. I have an audition in February for The Voice. I've auditioned twice for The Voice already, and each time they have told me no. Well, each time they said, if, you, if I didn't call you back, you're free to go, and thank you for auditioning. They never call me back. And it is, it's, it's a little stab right in the heart, but you know what? It just means I gotta get better. And it's just, you know, I love you guys, and I love when all of you say, oh my gosh, your voice is so amazing, you sound beautiful, blah, blah, blah. And I know you mean it. You're not lying to me. But you care. And you're not going to be like, oh, you're terrible. You know, you guys care. And I appreciate that. 
but to hear from somebody who's critical about it because they're looking for specific people and to have them say, mm, not quite what we're looking for. That doesn't necessarily mean I'm bad. It just means I'm not what they're looking for. And I'm okay with that now. That used to really bother me, especially when I would go to um, acting, you know, auditions and stuff or or even casting calls, and they're just like, eh, not what we're looking for. I get that a lot more now with the purple hair, but <laughs> I don't care anymore. That's that's how I feel. I just, I got to the point where, you know what? I love me. I love who I am. This is who I am. This is, this is where I've come. Purple hair and all, this is me. And if you don't like it, that's not my problem. Just means I'll find somebody who does. Um, and I really think that that's what 2015 is going to be for me. It's going to be a year of going for it, whatever it is. If I want to do it, that's what I'm going to do. I'm getting in more into fitness now. I've got a little Fitbit here, Fitbit Flex, um, to keep track of, you know, my exercise, the food I eat, the amount I drink so I can keep myself accountable. And... You know, I, I need to do that in other aspects of my life as well, where, like I said, whenever the voice comes into Atlanta, I'm going to that audition. I, I don't care if I have to take a day off work. I'm going to the voice audition if it's in Atlanta. Now, if it doesn't come to Atlanta, I don't go. I don't even audition online because I feel like I want to make that impression face to face. It's very easy to edit a tape and make you look amazing and whatever I want that face-to-face -face interaction I want to be in that room and I can't even mean to tell you those rooms are amazing the rooms they pick are like these beautiful like I don't even want to say they're sound I guess they're like meeting rooms but they have like a beautiful sound to them and it, I've heard a lot of amazing singers the two times I've auditioned and none of them got picked I was always in the room where nobody got picked <laughs> um, so I'm hoping that's not the case this year. Um, but that was always how it was. Like everybody would sing and I'm just like, oh my gosh, they're so amazing. And their voice is beautiful. And this room is beautiful. And the sound is amazing. And, you know, this year, if I have any advice, it's to not give up. Believe in yourself and believe in who you are because that's all you can be. There's no point in trying to be somebody else. There's no other version of you. So you might as well be you. And if someone doesn't like you, find out what you can do to be better. Say, you know, you're an actor and somebody doesn't like you. Sometimes it's not because you're not a good actor. Sometimes it's just not what they're looking for. But sometimes maybe your skills aren't that great. And, and find somebody who's critical. Find somebody who, who nitpicks, who just irritates the crap out of you. Or you're like, oh, they can't find a good thing about anything. Find that person and get their opinion. Because if they have nothing to nitpick about you on, then you're doing something right. But here's the thing. And this is uh, something I've been going on for a really long time. Never, ever, ever master the craft of whatever it is you're doing. You can never master it. And it's not to say it's not possible. But if you continue to to strive for mastering it but never actually master it that means you're going to continue to grow i remember somebody saying once that when they say you know reach for the seat or you know reach for the ceiling that's that's your goal is the ceiling is your goal well that ceiling is someone else's floor so when you're reaching for that ceiling because that's your best that's someone else's minimum Keep reaching for that ceiling. When you realize that's the floor, you get back up and you reach for the ceiling. And then when you realize that's the floor, you just keep going. When you master a craft or when you think you've mastered a craft, that's when somebody else is going to surpass you and somebody else is going to be better. Never, ever, ever stop learning at whatever it is you're passionate about or whatever it is you're good at. Keep learning. Keep growing. Keep getting better. That's that's my biggest, biggest advice for 2015 for everybody, for anybody who watches this. Please keep growing. Don't stop learning. Be better. You don't want to be the best. 
because that's when somebody else is going to be better than you. So you want to continue to be better and know that there's no end to that learning. Every actor, no matter how long they've been doing acting, probably still has to go back and take acting classes from time to time or remind themselves something from their acting class to be better at their next role. Or they have to research that character or research, you know, if you're playing a 1990 drug dealer and you've never had experience in that, guess what? You're going to read about it. You're going to learn about it. You might even go out and meet current drug dealers or, you know, I'm not saying you should go meet drug dealers, but I'm just saying if you're playing a role, you want to research that as much as possible. You want to be the best at that as possible to make it believable. If you want to be a singer, never stop taking vocal lessons. Always, always, always learn something new. Whether it's making you better by how you sound or learning something about how you breathe or how the fundamentals of it work, whatever it is, say you're uh, is, I don't even know anything. It, it, it applies to everything. Never, ever stop. And if it's something you're passionate about, don't let somebody tell you you can't do it. To me, I'm stubborn. That's motivation for me. Someone says, oh, you can't do that. I'd be like, really? You really think I can't do that? Oh, I will show you. That's my motivation. But not everybody's like that. Some people, when someone tells them, oh, you can't do this, they go, okay, you're right. And I understand that and when, when I was told that I wasn't a team material for the 12 Stone Band, I was crushed. And I almost gave up, like, what am I even, what am I even singing for? This is silly. I mean, I thought I was amazing. All I tried to do was get into the band for the church it really shouldn't be that hard I've done it before I've been in a praise team before I'm good I know I'm good but not good enough for them and I got kind of mad and then I thought I can't be mad I've never had vocal lessons before I've never had any training whatsoever I can't be mad about that and neither should you don't be upset when someone thinks you're not good use that as fuel to be better and that's what I wish for everybody in 2015 use that fuel whatever it is to be better get better learn more do more follow your heart you know if it's something that you know say you tried to get into be a lawyer because you were passionate about it and then you realized maybe you really wanted just to be a chef but somebody told you hey you'd make a really good lawyer and you're like I really just that's not my thing I'd rather cook food for people. Do what your heart tells you. Be true to yourself. Be you. Love you. Be you. I mean, like I said, there's there's no reason trying to be somebody else. Because that person's already there. You know, I could try to be Jennifer Aniston or um, Angelina Jolie, but guess what? They already exist. I'm the only version of me that anyone's ever gonna have. Just like Jennifer Aniston and Angel G and blah, Angelina Jolie are the only versions of them they're ever going to have. They might have close seconds. You know, um, Jennifer Lawrence. Who's gonna be the next Jennifer Lawrence? Well, they can never be Jennifer Lawrence, but they can be like her. They can use her as an influence for them being them, but they're still gonna be different. They're gonna be themselves. So learn who you are, learn what it is you enjoy, what makes you happy, what drives your spirit. That I think that's the big thing. What is it that drives your spirit? And then find out why. Me personally, here's mine. What drives my spirit? Singing. I love singing. I love music. I don't care what it is. Big band, jazz, rap, hip-hop, pop, uh, country, um, <laughs> depends on who we're talking about. Um, dubstep I love music now I'm not really good at reciting band names and I'm not really that good at remembering song titles however you play the song and be like oh yeah that song and I will know it word for word because I love music and for me I I sing um, when my desktop used to work I would sing on a karaoke site because 
when I was having a bad day or a good day or some kind of emotional something day, I would sing. And that's how I would get it out. I would get it out to people because I would sing. And that was a stress reliever for me to, to get on my computer, my desktop, which is currently dead, um, to get on my desktop and sing these karaoke songs to the best of my ability at the time um, to just let it out. I'd pick songs that kind of fit where I was feeling that day. Sometimes it'd be slower songs. Maybe I'm upset and they'd be, you know, like Adele songs or something. Um, or maybe it's just a song I really like. So I do that for me. And I think whatever it is that drives your spirit, you need to do it for you. Look inside, figure, it is what it, figure out what it is that you like and make sure that you're doing it for you and not for somebody else. Because I think when we're true to ourselves, that's when it's most genuine. That's when it means the most. So find out what it is that drives you, find out what you're passionate about, and make sure that, that that's how you feel and not how somebody says you should feel. And then never ever stop. Keep going, keep pursuing. They actually uh, said it at church today. They said, you can get knocked down, but you're not knocked out. Keep going. Don't ever give up. That's my projection for 2015. It's don't ever give up. And uh, to quote 12 Stones word for 2015, be resilient. So I hope you guys have a good night and I hope you made it through the whole video. I chatted a lot longer than I thought I was going to. Um, but it's just it was something that was on my heart that I wanted to say and just I wanted it to be less about me and more just advice and hopefully motivation for somebody somewhere it touched you in a certain way to maybe make you rethink that decision of giving up whether it's fitness or a goal or a hobby or a passion whatever it is if it's something you care about don't give it up keep going for it so i hope you guys have a good night um well at this time good morning most of you are probably still asleep <laughs> but um i'll do another vlog soon i don't know when we'll see we'll see what happens but uh i will talk to you guys soon bye